Connecticut's coffers are overflowing. A revenue surge and a plump rainy day fund are sitting in the state's laps. Lawmakers on both sides of the aisle hoping to return the good fortune to state residents, but to who and how are at the center of debate for Democrats and Republicans. This morning, we hear from two top state leaders, Senate Majority Leader, Democratic Senator Bob Duff, and Senate Minority Leader, Republican Senator Kevin Kelly, give us their take. And many of Connecticut's cities dealing with an uptick in violence. The capital city with double the amount of homicides currently compared to this time last year. Community leaders coming together to try and find healing and solutions. This morning we catch up with Pastor A.J. Johnson, leader of the Urban Hope Refuge Church. His thoughts on how to tackle a complex problem. It's all today on The Real Story. Good morning and thanks for joining us on The Real Story. I'm Jen Bernstein. Well, there's really no way else to say it. Connecticut is rolling in the dough, so to speak. The state's projected budget surplus close to $4 billion. The rainy day fund is maxed out for now, standing at $3.1 billion. Now, we should keep in mind that Connecticut does have structural problems and our pension liability is pretty astronomical, so we are far from free and clear, but lawmakers have some wiggle room and for a state that's known as being an expensive place to live, lawmakers have the opportunity to return some of the state's good fortune to its residents. Of course, it's complicated. The to who, when, and why is something Republicans and Democrats don't necessarily agree on. Heck, Democrats and the governor aren't necessarily on the same page either. We have to wait and see on that. And time is ticking on this short session. It closes out in less than two weeks. So can lawmakers get something else done? Keep in mind, they did implement a gas tax holiday that was a bipartisan effort, but will that be it? Let's talk about it with Senate Majority Leader, Democratic Senator Bob Duff from Norwalk and Senate Minority Leader, Republican Senator Kevin Kelly, who hails from Stratford. Welcome back on The Real Story. Thank you. Good morning, great to be here. Okay, so we have less than two weeks until this short session closes. Senator Duff, you and I were just speaking before the segment started. You, you all wanna get something done, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's really imperative for us to uh, make sure that we uh, pass uh, midterm budget adjustments. Uh, we get through with the bills that we're trying to pass this year that helps people in the state of Connecticut. And again, as we even spoke back in uh, January, I believe it was in February, uh, we have a surplus thanks to uh, a decade of many hard decisions. And so we want to make sure that what we do is we give some tax cuts back to the people of the state of Connecticut um, and do it in a way that targets the middle class and, and those who can use it and need it um, that will better our state. Would you say, what, what are your biggest plans out there? I know we had the new income tax cut for families with children. Is that your main focus right now? Well, I think there are a number of different things that are on the table, but uh, certainly ensuring that we have uh, tax cuts that uh, help uh, working families, whether it's property tax cuts, tax cuts for seniors, uh, accelerating the tax cuts for pensions and annuities. Uh, we've done tax cuts in the past. We just want to extend those as well. We did a, a bipartisan gas tax cut as well, sales tax free week, uh, free bus service right now that's going on until June 30th. Uh, so I think what we're trying to do is make sure we work in a targeted way that helps uh, middle class families, middle income families, working families all across the state of Connecticut. Um, and that uh, brings to them relief that they need uh, uh, right now during these times. Senator Kelly, um, you, the Republicans unveiled their plan late last week. Tell us what's at the crux of that. Well, at the crux of that is that the, we have a balanced budget. Uh, it's in surplus. As a matter of fact, by $4 billion, uh, just with uh, revenue of, from inflation, and that's in sales and use tax, we've got almost a billion dollars. Uh, and so what we want to do is return that. In other words, leave it in the taxpayer's wallet now. Uh, don't make it come to Hartford. That's what many of the Democrats' uh, proposals are about, tax credits. You have to file a tax return and claim those next year. People are struggling with the 40-year high in inflation today, and the relief from government needs to be there today. So we were looking at reducing uh, the income tax from 5 to 4 percent on households under 175 thousand dollars individuals under seventy five thousand dollars 
take these gas and, and sales tax holidays, not to June 30th, but to J D December 31st. Look at getting rid of a truck tax extended to diesel. We're also looking at helping seniors and those on fixed incomes with, uh, you know, accelerating the pension and Social Security uh, income tax, uh, re repe repealing those. So we're looking at bringing help today. I think that's what people want. And just because the state budget is in surplus and doing well doesn't mean that families' budgets are, are doing the same. And I think uh, we're, we hear that and we're speaking up to make sure that that happens. Senator Duff, have you looked at the plan? Is there anything there that um, you all can work with? From what Senator Kelly was just saying, it sounded like uh, the income tax cut relief for families might be similar for, for middle class families. <laughs> Look, I think we work best when we work in a bipartisan manner. We passed the uh, gas tax cut uh, in the bipartisan manner, passed unanimously through the legislature. Uh, we are hindered on some of the ARPA rules um, on some of the tax cuts that we have. But again, we're also looking to make some target investments into early childhood education, uh, relief to our, our cities and towns so that that helps on property taxes, a car tax relief as well. I, I've been one to call for elimination of car taxes as well. Uh, so I think there's a number of different things that Democrats have led on, especially on tax cuts uh, and, and reducing uh, our, our budget, uh, but making critical investments that are necessary to help middle class and help working families all across the state of Connecticut. But again, let's make sure that we're working together. Let's make sure that uh, whatever we're doing is in the best interest of the people of the state of Connecticut. Um, and I think that if we do that, uh, then we'll, we'll be able to come together on agreements. Interestingly, the, the hindrance on the tax amount of tax cuts that you can do, that's a point where the two sides disagree, right, Senator Kelly? Absolutely. I mean, uh, we know that there's 18 states uh, across the country, including two Democrat governors, who have already sued the Biden administration over these alleged caps and have taken it to federal court and found that they are unconstitutional. Uh, we asked the governor and the attorney general to not sit on Connecticut's rights and to fight for Connecticut taxpayers and join those lawsuits. Uh, and unfortunately, they haven't done it. Now, there's a recent case uh, and we're looking at whether or not the Biden administration decides to take that uh, and take it to uh, federal court and appeal it if they do. I know that our caucus together with the House Republican caucus, uh, since the, the governor and the attorney general are sitting on the rights, uh, we believe that the taxpayers need somebody to fight for them. And, and should that occur, occur uh, we will uh, file what's known as an amicus brief uh, to challenge that rule because we don't see in ARPA the, a requirement which is happening in Connecticut where the state over collects its taxes to the tune of four billion dollars you know in one billion due to inflation uh, and that we can't return that back to the taxpayers that just doesn't seem fair it doesn't seem right uh, and it's something that we strongly believe needs to be returned to families while they're struggling. Senator Duff, can you just explain to our viewers what this issue is it has to do with President Biden and federal funds right? Yeah, I mean, first I would just like to say that I wish the Republicans were as just motivated uh, on the largest tax increase in the state of Connecticut's history, which was the Trump tax increase with uh, the SALT, removed SALT deduction, state and local tax deduction from the federal income tax that was targeted towards blue states uh, and has raised taxes uh, in a huge way uh, to the people of the state of Connecticut. It's the largest tax increase in the state's history. Um, what I will say on the uh, on the other issues is that again, I think working together, uh, we can we can certainly make progress. Uh, we have we have worked hard and as Democrats to. Uh, reduce and eliminate taxes on pensions and, um, and annuities. We've reduced taxes and eliminated on veterans. We have reduced taxes uh, for uh, senior citizens, other working families. There are some rules with uh, the American uh, Recovery Act that uh, President Biden signed and was passed through Congress. Uh, and I think that we shouldn't hang our hat on a hope and a dream. We should really work hard to make sure that whatever we do is tangible. Uh, it helps families and it makes a difference for them right away, and not something that we're going to tie ourselves in court uh, for years on. You know, talking about the SALT taxes, obviously that was federal, right? And uh, it was implemented during President Trump um, and by Republicans there. But are we surprised that the SALT tax hasn't been repealed with President Biden in office? Is that, you know, an ongoing discussion? I mean, I know obviously you both are within the state legislature, but anyone hear anything about that? Well, I think it's part of the discussion, but I'd, I'd rather defer that to my federal colleagues. Okay. So what about you, Senator yeah. Kelly? You want to respond to um, 
what Senator well, Duff had said about the salt tax. Yeah, first, first and foremost, the reason why it was so onerous on Connecticut uh, was because we have some of the highest state and local taxes in the nation. We're the second most taxed state. Uh, and we are uncomfortable as Republicans with that. We, we aren't trying to become number one. We're actually trying to fall in that ranking. Uh, and, and so that's why it was so painful. Now, you have a Democrat majority in both chambers of Congress. You have a Democrat president. Uh, there's no reason why that couldn't get done to give some taxpayers relief here in the state of Connecticut. But that's not happening. And uh, with all the political eggs in the Democratic basket, you'd think that that would help the people of Connecticut. Unfortunately, it hasn't been. Uh, and I believe that we need a voice that's going to stand up for the Connecticut taxpayer. Uh, and the fact of the matter is they need relief. Families across Connecticut are struggling. We need to bring relief, and we need to bring relief now. Talking That's what about, we're doing. Talking about bringing relief right now, let's talk about the gas tax holiday, because that was something that Republicans and Democrats were able to get on the same page with. Um, you know, we're, we're doing a story on a place in Waterbury that once that gas tax went through, uh, the price per gallon dropped to $3 and like 61 cents. But then now, that was right when, you know, a little while ago when the gas tax holiday went into effect. Now that, that same station is back up over uh, again, up to $3.81 per gallon. And obviously we're dealing with, you know, the price of gasoline going up and there, there are many factors that go into that. Um, but the point is people are still struggling out there because $3.81 is still really expensive. So is there more to do on the gas tax holiday? And is the gas tax holiday helping as much as both of you would hoped it would? Senator Duff, I'll start with you. Yeah, I certainly think that the gas tax holiday is, is helping families all across the state of Connecticut. I mean, it's, as uh, Senator Kelly said, you know, we tried to provide relief uh, right away, uh, and this is relief right at the pump. I know it had a number of people who were very happy that we were able to pass this on a bipartisan basis. Uh, I do worry about what happens on June 30th at the expiration of the gas tax holiday. So I think those are conversations that are ongoing uh, with the administration and our budget and how we try to work that through. I mean, obviously, we don't have uh, as state legislators, or I don't think anybody really does, have any control over what, you know, what comes out of the ground and, the, and all, all the different hands that goes through to get to the uh, pump at the gas station. There's a lot of a lot of hands there and a lot of people in between. Uh, but I think we can certainly try and do what we can. We want to just make sure that we're, we're also not um, uh, neglecting our roads and highways and bridges and things like that. Uh, but while while we do have a surplus in our transportation fund, I think that it's important for us to recognize um, the fact that uh, we need to do something. We have been doing something, and we'll continue to look for ways to provide relief to uh, motorists, um, uh, but also ensure that we're uh, still also investing in in buses and rails and, and clean technology and looking long term, not just short term. Senator Kelly. Well, you know, twenty five cent reduction. Uh, is a start. That's what we said then. Uh, we're thankful that we were able to extend that gas uh, tax holiday through June 30th, as Senator Duff said. Uh, it's after that. Our package today or this week indicated that we're going to go through uh, the end of the year uh, because I think that we need to and can do uh, more. We have about a billion dollars in surplus revenue uh, as a result of high inflation. It's windfall. Uh, we have a balanced budget. So uh, that initial holiday was about 100 million. Uh, we can go another 900 million and, and keep that quarter on every gallon of gas uh, in place. And then look further than that. We can look at diesel. Uh, we can look at that highway truck tax. It's going to increase the cost of, of goods in the state of Connecticut. And uh, like I said, the income tax relief uh, for families and individuals, families under 175 and, and individuals under 75,000. That's those are the middle and low income families. And so uh, we're, we're bringing relief to those that are most most in need. Senator Duff, we, we've run out of time, but just really quickly, are there active, because you kind of hinted at this a little bit, but are there active discussions going about extending the gas tax holiday? Is that something that is on the table? I think there are discussions. Uh, we'll see where they go at, the point, at this point. But I, again, uh, I'd just like to reiterate the fact that I, I do have to uh, June 30th and you know, going from 25 cents gas tax holiday to zero. Uh, so, you know, we got to figure that part out. But I, I do think that all of this is very important to uh, families across the state of Connecticut. Democrats are working on it. We're fighting for you. And we want to make sure that we continue to uh, see you. 
All right, Senator Duff, Senator Kelly, always appreciate you both coming on the program and giving us an update on what's going on at the state legislature. And I'm sure we will be watching you closely over the next two weeks and especially a week from now because it's going to get crazy at the state capitol as you all try to get the work of the people done. Thank you both very much. Thanks so much. Thank you. <laughs> all right. All right, coming up on The Real Story, Hartford's homicides on track to be higher than last year. Ahead, Pastor A.J. Johnson will tell us his thoughts as the city looks to curb violence as we head into the summer months. The Real Story will return in a moment.